Good morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name as we come to worship our Lord and Savior. We're excited about National Lutheran Schools Week and an uh, opportunity for our children to uh, lead us in our worship uh, today, really, in many of the different ways they're doing that. But we're recognizing Lutheran schools all throughout our nation and even throughout the world. If you didn't get an opportunity to fill out one of these connection cards, uh, we uh, encourage you to do that. We have those on the back podium back there. You can do that after the service as well. Helps us track attendance, but it's also a way that we can keep in contact with you as well. If you have prayer requests or other things, you can put that on the card and just leave that back there for us. So we encourage you to use that as well. We are a Christian community called to worship and sent to serve, welcoming all to walk with Christ and to grow in faith. That's our guiding statement here at St. John. It, it guides all of our ministries and especially even our school ministry, which is one of our biggest ones here. And we're excited about that and being able to share that. So Mrs. Gundell, if you'd like to share a little bit about our school ministry. Good morning. This is one of my favorite worship services because we bring our church family and our school family together in one place in God's house for, for worship. Um, you know, this is our 177th year in the community. We think about the number of lives that have been taught, about God's love for them, and what that looks like for them personally, but what that looks like in the communities and in the vocations that they serve later in life too. And it is just so awesome what God provides. So it is good to be here with you today. I would like my staff to please stand. This is the staff that serves daily, and they serve with joy, and love for the Lord and for the children that are placed in their care. So as you look around, you see teacher assistants, you see teachers, um, and we are just so grateful for them. So would you give them a round of applause, please? <laughs> All right. Well, this morning we have several wonderful songs to share with you. We, our handbells, our eighth graders um, began playing handbells just this year and when you hear them play you'll be surprised that it's only been a couple of months to pull a few songs together but I'm so pleased with that too. Um, it is good to be here today. I'm glad St. John is the place that God guided you to for your child's education. Let's begin worship. As part of our beginning of our worship, it's also important to recognize that we're all here together. And so what we do at the beginning of our worship service is that we welcome and greet each other. So I invite you to stand and let's greet each other this morning. Okay, we're ready to begin our worship service, and we recognize that we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as our children are going to share with us the Epiphany Canon. Excellent. Thank you, students. And that's something we've been using as part of our uh, 
uh, chapel services that we have every Wednesday. And every year we have a theme. And this year our theme is that it's about making disciples. And it's, so we would say we are disciples and, we, and then they would say be one, make one. And so we have a litany that we do every year that I want you to be a part of this as well as our students lead it. We are disciples. Be one, make one. Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. We are disciples. Be one, make one. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. We are disciples. Be one, make one. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. We are disciples. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. We are disciples. Be one, make one. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the, fa the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. We are disciples. Be one, make one. Another part of our chapel service is actually every morning we pray Luther's morning prayer. Actually, I'm going to invite you to stand as we pray this prayer together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing our song together, Christ Be My Leader. When we come to worship our Lord and Savior, we also recognize our need for a Savior. We recognize that we are sinners, and part of our service is to confess those sins, but then also to hear God's forgiveness. I invite you to stand as we continue with our confession and absolution. God's Word tells us, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given a son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray this prayer together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, even as you have committed the care and nurture of children to your people, graciously enlighten those who teach and those who are committed to their instruction, that they may know your eternal truth and trust in you all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our scripture readings. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 52, verses 6 through 10. The Lord says, Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, on that day, I am the one who is speaking. Here I am. How delightful on the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness who announces salvation and says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen raise their voices. They shout joyfully together, for they will see with their own eyes when the Lord restores Zion. Be cheerful, shout joyfully together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, so that the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament reading today comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, 8 through 17. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. 
that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not ever heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us, so faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading is from Matthew 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated as our children are going to stay standing as they sing their song together, Go Tell. We're going to continue now with our children's message, so we invite our, like our preschoolers and kindergartners to come forward. Uh, Mrs. Scundell is uh, hurrying up here real quickly as she is going to lead our children's message for us today. Sure. 
All right, and I'll speak in here so that everybody can hear me. But really, I'm talking to this group of kids right near me, but also the ones right there in that pew. So stay with me here. I have a few questions for you. So my first question is, how did you learn to know letters? How many of you started with the song A, B, C, D, E? Did you guys learn that song? You did? Well, why did you learn that song? Why did you learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Because all of those letters make sounds, and sounds make words. Oh, you are so smart. They sure do. So I'm just going to ask you, sometimes parents or teachers, they may have you look at a letter and think about it, and maybe, can you trace this letter in the air? Show me what this letter looks like if you trace it in the air. It's the letter, oh, right. And how about this letter? Does anybody know? E, okay, and then, and we're not gonna do all 26 letters of the alphabet, but I do love knowing that you know what they are. All of that is in preparation to be successful readers. And if you look at the big kids there in the pews, they all have learned how to read. And some of you are going to tell me, Mrs. Gundell, I know how to read, too. When we think about our older ones, they have to learn some math facts. And maybe you've started learning some math facts. What did you guys use to learn your math facts? What did you use? Anybody use flashcards? Maybe. Did anybody use riddles? Or maybe just repetition? over and over and over again. All of those preparations are to help you in math. You know, at St. John, we have prepared you to be successful when you grow up to be moms and dads. You will each choose to be. Maybe you'll be a dentist. Maybe you will be a police officer. Maybe you'll come back and teach at St. John. Who knows what you'll do, but one day, you're going to have a job to do, and all of these years are in preparation for that job. But even bigger than that, because we know that life continues in heaven one day, even bigger than that, we learn here what it means to be a disciple. What's our theme this year? Disciples, be one. So first, we have to learn what it means to be one. What do we learn here at St. John? Can you show me what, um, can you show me, do you know this motion, what that means? Jesus. And then can you show me loves? Me. Jesus loves me. We learn that every single day at St. John, how Jesus loves us, how he promises to be with us, how he tells us to trust in him and depend on him for all things in life. And then he tells us to go make disciples. And we have to go. We have to get out and go. How do we feel prepared for going? Well, we have to first learn. And you've done that. So you are ready. You're ready to proclaim the gospel. You're ready to tell everyone else that Jesus loves you. Can you do Jesus? Loves you? Would you stand up and find somebody out there to say that to? Because that's just what we're told to do. So stand up tall. Stand up tall. Show everybody Jesus loves and you. And point to a whole bunch of people out there. Yes, that's how we make disciples. Thank you very much, preschool, kindergarten. You may go have a seat. And remember, you are a disciple. You can go and tell about Jesus. Thank you, children, and this is Gundell. We're going to sing our next uh, song together. Um, the words are probably not what you recognize, but you're going to recognize the tune very quickly. I am Jesus, little lamb, but once a long, long time ago.
May the words in my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here today be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are disciples. You guys have gotten really good at that, and that's wonderful. And that's our theme for this year is about making disciples, about seeing what God has done in our lives and then how we can proclaim that message of good news to the people around us. You see, it is important that we learn that, and that's one of the wonderful things in the school, that our children get to learn that, but that's only step one. We learn so that we can share then with others, and that's how the message continues to go on and go forth in the world. What we learn, we need to share with others. That was Jesus' command in Matthew, the end of Matthew, as he, after he had risen from the dead, he was ready to go back to heaven, and he said to his disciples, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't just the disciples were going to stay to themselves and learn all about this, but they had to go. And we too are disciples. We are learning to be disciples ourselves, but we are also making disciples as we go out into this world. So our theme this week, we had uh, five different days of different uh, themes that kind of go with this whole idea of making disciples. And the first day was talking about children. And that seems obvious in the sense of a school, the children, the students that are here with us. And part of making disciples is being a part of this environment, being a part of this school. To not only learn the important things like ABCs and reading, but to learn about Jesus and how he impacts our whole lives. And the privilege that our teachers and staff have of doing that each and every day. Not only teaching the basics, but also teaching Jesus. And showing that as examples in our lives. Day two then talked about families. Our children come from families. You who are here today. Those who are extended families as well. That that is part of that group. And we know that sometimes not all of our family members are believers in Jesus, and sometimes that grieves our heart. But yet we are called to make disciples even in our own families. It's wonderful, though, when families are able to share that faith together and to promise to care for our children and for others by telling them about Jesus. The third day we talked about the church. And we talked about that a lot of times we think about the church like the building that we came into right now. But that's not really the church. The church is people. It's you and me that make up the church. And the church actually even spans time. That from the disciples to the end of time, the church has been here. But it is the people. It is the people who make up the church. On our fourth day, then, we talked about celebrating disciplers. People who you know that just have that heart for sharing the love of Jesus. Now I want to to share with you something that that we've started this year and hopefully will continue throughout the years of connecting our church and our school together is that we have church sponsors that come into the classrooms to share their life stories about Jesus as well. Many of them are actually sitting right here with our children today. That's a discipler role. That's a role of taking a few moments, a few hours every week or every couple weeks to come and share with the children their own lives and what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And we thank our sponsors as they have dedicated themselves to this task, this task of sharing Jesus with our students. Finally, though, it's about making disciples of all nations. Now, that's important because a lot of times we we get excited about sharing it ourselves. We get excited about moments like this where we're all together. And we forget, though, that our task is to tell about Jesus wherever we go. And that we are to take that message of Jesus to all the world. And that we don't pick and choose who hears about Jesus. In fact, we're supposed to be lavish in sharing that, extravagant in sharing that, sharing it with anybody and everybody who wants to hear about Jesus, who who maybe even sometimes doesn't want to hear about Jesus, but we want to share with them this good news that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He's the one that came into this world because of our brokenness and sin. 
That sin that breaks our world apart, breaks our relationships apart, breaks our relationship even with God apart. And it doesn't take long for us to see that brokenness in our world. But our task is to share about Jesus who not only came into this world, but also died for our sins, to take those sins away, but rose again to give us new life in him and new life for the whole world. And so our task is to share this wonderful good news with all people in all places that we go. I'd like to share with you a video that just kind of dramatically talks about this idea of going and sharing with everyone the message of Jesus and his good news. And Jesus said to his disciples, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Proclaim not just to his sons, but to his beloved daughters. Not just the privileged few, but to the entire human race, to the whole creation, to all the colors and creeds, for God so loved all of us. How then can one daughter be more worthy than another? One son be more deserving than his brother? One color be more beautiful than all the rest? For it is written that no one can number his children. They will come from every nation. They will come from all tribes. They will speak all languages. And with their mouths, they will sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Therefore, we are all created in his image, not just a certain few. We are all adopted. None of us are his by birth. And we all must find the way, the truth, and the life. We all need Jesus. Jesus, the martyr. Jesus, the poor man. Jesus, the prisoner. Jesus, the teacher. Jesus, the prophet. Jesus, the resurrected. Jesus, the first and the last. He is the creator of diversity, the author of equality, the defender of the defenseless, the one who breaks the chains of slavery, the one who continues to fight for freedom. He is the Messiah. He is the risen King. He is our only hope. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, the one who died for all. That's the message that we have. That is the wonderful message that we share. We talked about it in our Old Testament lesson of, of going out, Isaiah said, and proclaiming to all the nations. And in Romans, it says, how beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim good news, that good news that needs to go to all the world. And so that's our theme, that we are disciples who make disciples. We are disciples. We are uh, you can do better than that. We are disciples. We are disciples. And let's share the message of Jesus. Amen. We continue now with uh, gathering our offering.
we continue now in our worship service with the prayers of the church, I invite you to stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the holy Christian church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. that arise as we do work God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit in the bound of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the educational institutions of our church, for our preschools, our day schools and high schools, our colleges and universities, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For the government and all who have been assigned to positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably for the good of the people, let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. For those who are sick, that God would grant them healing to their bodies, strength to bear their infirmities. With patience and grace, let us pray to the Lord. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, giving thanks always, and that the Spirit would lead to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty provided to support the mission of the church and to help those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the homes in which your people dwell, fill them with your presence and keep all harm and danger far from them. Grant that we may dwell together in peace under the protection of your holy angels, sharing eternally in your blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Again, we're so glad that you worshiped with us today, and just a reminder that we have worship here on Sundays at 9 a.m., Wednesdays at uh, 7 p.m., so a couple opportunities there to join us for worship. Also, if you have concerns, prayer requests, other things, stay connected with us. There are multiple ways that you can reach out to us. If you're interested in the things going on here at St. John, we do have an email newsletter. It goes out every week. You can sign up for that on our website, and uh, just check out things that are there as well. Also, thank you for the giving that you do, the giving that comes in multiple different ways, but the giving because of God truly has blessed us, and we thank you for those gifts. Again, this week has been the theme, Making Disciples for Life, or National Lutheran Schools Week. That's really been our theme for the whole school year, actually, but uh, we're recognizing all the congregations through, or all the schools throughout our nation. On the back page of, uh, of the bulletin, if you have picked up one of those, there's some uh, information about um, the different schools and all the ministries that we have here in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Also, today is the last day to sign up for this, and now that I've got parents here and their attentions too, if you know Euchre, even if you know a little bit about Euchre, we want you to come to this tournament. Because the idea of this tournament is actually to get as many people as we can together to enjoy some fellowship together. But today is the last day to sign up for it. So there's a sign-up sheet in the back there, uh, underneath the, there's a TV screen in the back. 
If you are interested in it at all, just please sign up for that. Uh, put your telephone number on there. We will uh, reach out to you. Cost is $10 for that, and it'll be at 5.45 on Saturday, February 4th, so in about a uh, week and a half here. But today is the last day to sign up for it. So if you're interested in it, uh, please uh, do that. Again, we are a Christian community called to worship and sent to serve, welcoming all to walk with Christ and to grow in faith. And a big part of that ministry is our school. And we give thanks to our teachers, our staff, to our church sponsors, and you, as you are part of this ministry here. And we give you thanks and praise for that. But there's a lot of other different uh, bits and pieces that go on that are important to the ministry here as well. And one of them is, uh, well, our organist, Doreen Sutherland, who is having a birthday today. And so I think we should sing happy birthday to her. Okay, I can't lead the happy birthday. Someone else is going to lead the happy birthday, but let's... Birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yep. Blessings to you, Doreen. Thank you for all that you do and the music and running around and getting all the music done and everything. Thank you so much uh, for that. Now, before we actually finish our time, we're going to sing our final song, In Christ Alone. We have a video that we want to show you, just a little over three minutes, that shows the highlights of this week. So I want you to just kind of uh, sit back and enjoy that. Once that's done, then we're going to stand and sing our final hymn together.
Let's stand and sing together in Christ alone. <laughs>